Welcome to our last topic in our next unit, or in this unit on applying the integral. In this unit, or in this topic, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at finding the volume of a solid shape that's formed by cross-sectional areas to a shape that's in the xy plane. And it's simply, um, in this particular, in my notes here, I, I say that it's perpendicular to the x-axis, and all the problems I'm going to give you out of the book is, are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. But more recently, I've seen problems that are perpendicular to the y-axis. So you've got to be a little bit careful of that. If it's perpendicular to the y-axis, then this would be a of y, that cross-section. And the a and b values would be y values as opposed to, a, uh, as opposed to x values. What happens in this, and i got some drawings for you. It's a little bit hard to visualize. Is you take a, uh, a graph in the xy plane, let's say a circle. We're going to deal with a circle in a few moments. Let me say a circle or a parabola or something like that. And we're going to connect the sides of the circle by using uh, rectangles, or we're going to use squares, or we're going to use semicircles, or we're going to use um, equilateral triangles. And the whole key is writing this area right here. Generally, the A's and B's are easy to find. It's writing that area. And sometimes this area is given to you as a formula. Sometimes it's going to be an odd shape. Um, but usually, this, these, all these problems are generally connected. And we'll look at, in class, a couple AP questions where you know, part A is find the area between the curves. Part B is spin around at axes um, using you know, disk or washers. And part C is find the volume by using cross sections. So this makes, you know, put all this stuff, all these topics, these four videos together, and, and we can come up with one good AP question. So let's take a look at some examples. It's this area that changes. You've got to be careful of that. Any geometry areas that you need, I'll give you. Like if you need the area of an equilateral triangle, um, I expect you know the area of a semicircle. And those are some of the common ones. So in my example here, this is what's happening. Again, a little bit hard to visualize three dimensions. This is supposed to be a circle. But because of my window, it's a little bit off. It's supposed to be x squared plus y squared equals 16. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing equilateral triangles. This is supposed to be a three-dimensional equilateral triangle that's coming out of my Promethean board at you, or out of the video at you. And that, that, that triangle is standing up. And there's going to be infinitely many triangles. There's going to be a smaller one over here, and then larger, and larger, and larger. And right on the y-axis would be the largest, and then they get smaller, and smaller, and smaller again. And you're going to form this kind of like half igloo, um, uh, you know, igloo or, I don't know, you know, beehive type shape. And what you, you know, because I'm perpendicular to the x-axis, I want x to be my variable of integration, so I'm going to start at negative 4, and I'm going to go over to positive 4, and then I just need to find the area of that equilateral triangle. This has to be expressed in terms of x value, so I need to solve it. So y equals um, plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared. You have to consider both positive and negative square root because ultimately I'm going to have to find the length of the side of my equilateral triangle. Okay. So um, first of all, the area of an equilateral triangle, if you know the side, is um, the square root of 3. Take that back. It is square root of 3, but I, I don't, we don't usually write it that way. It's s squared times the square root of 3 over 4. That's the area of equilateral triangle known on the side. The square root of 3 over 4 can come out front of your integral. That's a constant. So square root of 3 over 4 times the integral from negative 4 to 4. And I just have to write an expression for s. So I need to find an expression for s in terms of x here. So if I go from the top of my circle down to the bottom of my circle, and I think about how far that is, up to here, that's just the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. This is down to the negative square root of 16 minus x squared. So this whole side right here is going to be 2 times the square root of 16 minus x squared. And because it's squared here, it's squared there, dx. Um, again, don't worry about integrating them by hand. Uh, we'll do it in our calculator. Just be able to set up the integrals, uh, and, that, and that's good. Based upon, now, every one of these problems, and this is a little bit confusing at first because you have a hard time like visualizing what it is and all that stuff, but every one of these questions is exactly like this. So 
so it's done the exact same way. The only difference I would have if these equilateral triangles were perpendicular to the y-axis is I would have solved this for x equals in terms of y, because y would need, me, need to be my variable of integration. We'll look at those in class a little bit, because I don't have any example of those. If I take my same shape, and this time I'm dealing with squares, a little bit easier, because the area of a square is simply s squared. It's the same circle. I know it's kind of you know elongated because of my because of my picture, but it's the same idea. If I solve it for y again, plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared. Again, I just need to know the side of the square, the length of the side of the square. I'm still integrating from negative 4 up to positive 4. And it's going to be 2 square root of 16 minus x squared squared dx. Careful not to fall in the pattern that it's always 2. Um, you, it doesn't have to always be 2. Uh, it just depends on what I'm doing. But because this length is the square positive square root of 16 minus x squared, and this is the negative square root of 16 minus x squared, that's why it's 2. Okay? Represent them as, as being a distance, as being positive. And then my final example, what I have is I have semicircles that come out. And this, um, these semicircles, you know, you add them up. This time I just need the radius. So the distance of the radius is from this center out to the circle. That's my radius right there. So the area of that semicircle is one half of pi r squared. When I set up the integral, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to put that pi over 2 in front, this pi over 2 because it's a constant. Uh, I'm still integrating from negative 4 up to positive 4. And then I just have to decide what the radius is. And in this case, the radius is just out to the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. And again, it's dx. Um, the only thing that would change if it was perpendicular to the y-axis is y is your variable of integration. You have to solve the equation in terms of y and then logically use your, you know, it, how far is it away from the y-axis as opposed to the x-axis. Um, these are almost almost always perpendicular to either a y-axis or x-axis. They never give it to you like perpendicular to the line x equals 2 or y equals 1, that kind of stuff. We'll clarify in class a little bit and start pulling this all together with with the area, rotating it around this, the different axes and getting the, the solid of revolution, and then um, doing the, the uh, volume by cross-sections. So good luck on the, on, on the uh, assignment, and we'll see you tomorrow.